So welcome back to another video here in Pennsylvania on an absolutely beautiful Saturday afternoon. Kind of in the 70s. It's actually a Memorial Day weekend. Today's the uh, May, today's May 27th. And we're here going to visit an old cemetery, the Bethel Moravian Cemetery. Of course, there's a number of other cemeteries here at this spot too. Of course, this will be another episode in our French and Indian War series. And there are four men buried back here that are that were part of a, a massacre that occurred on June 26th, 1756, during the French and Indian War. But let me show you where we are. Here is the cemetery. And yes, these are much newer graves, but the cemetery goes all the way back and back in there. The really old part is way back there. But yeah, we are here in Lebanon County. Uh, just over that way is the, Lick, is the town of Lickdale. Up there is the Swatara Gap. This is the little blue mountain up this way. Just over the mountain is where uh, the Monroe Valley Chapel is located. We were there just recently with John and Lewis. So that's kind of where we are here in northern Lebanon County. Beautiful area back here. But yeah, this was the, in 1743, long time ago, the Moravians built a church here and a cemetery. There's a number of cemeteries here. You see the Moravian Church of Bethel Cemetery, 1743. Of course, it lists some other churches here then, too. Thus, the newer graves. Let's start making our way back. And the Moravian church that was here, like I said, it was built in 1743. It was a two-story log structure. But they stayed, uh, they worshipped here until about 1830. And then they abandoned the, the cemetery then in 1833. They... they joined uh, up with another Moravian church down near Lebanon, Hebron Moravian Church. The log church stood here until the 1870s and then it was torn down. And one account says some of the timbers and wood were used to build one of the older houses here in the area. There's a few old houses here, so maybe, I don't, I'm not sure which one it is. Another church was built here at one point too, part of another denomination, but there's nothing left of any of those churches. Yeah, we need to be down all the way in there. It's kind of an odd situation here. There's how, I mean, I don't know. There's like a, it's like you're in someone's backyard here. So we have a little spot in the shade to sit. Of course, you got to, we got to throw ourselves back to the 1750s during the French and Indian wartime era. Remember this, we were on Right here, we're on the edge of the frontier. Just up that way is the Blue Mountain, which I remember was the frontier between the, the settled lands and the Indian territory on the other side of the mountain. Like I mentioned, the Satara Gap back there, which was used, you know, for Indian raids during that time. So if you lived here in this area, you were very susceptible to those Indian raids, and that's exactly what happened here. So on June 26th of 1756, there were four men out plowing their fields. Because you got a picture of this area would have looked quite a bit different than it did today. Probably a lot more heavily forested in some areas with you know scattered patches of fields. But I'll put their names up on the screen. I'll probably butcher some of them, but they, they are buried down in here. But uh, their tombstones are not visible. We'll talk about why in a moment. Um, but their names are Jacob Haunch. I probably butchered that. Johann George Mice. Franz Albert and Frederick Weiser. Somewhere here they are. Yes, yeah, so they were just tending to their business, to their farms out here, and uh, that fateful day, you know, a group of Indians decided that was gonna be the day for them to do a raid into this area, and those men were, were killed. I'm not sure if any of their families were. I think their families were back home, but these men were out, you know, and about in their fields. Well, I should mention, too, that the church that was here, that Bethel Moravian Church, it was also used as a house of refuge during the war. We've talked about those in the past because it was a big, huge log structure. So in times of, you know, Indian raids, the people would go to that church as a place of refuge because it could fit a lot of people. But that raid that day was unexpected. Uh, and, yeah, those men were massacred just out plowing their fields. But how the times have changed... I just heard the one guy over there start his mower up a little while ago. The house up there, there's, there's, there was kids playing basketball or something way up there. 
nowadays you can be out here in your yard in your garden playing and you don't have to worry about a you know a band of Indians coming through or any enemies of any sort and, and killing you it's times have changed you know and I know I've talked about that in the past how in this country we are we are rather spoiled about stuff like that we don't really face dangers like that so much I mean you could get killed accidentally or by some you know somebody else committing a crime or something but we don't we don't worry you know, how, how many of you worry you know when you go out to mow your lawn that you know a roving man, band of whatever is gonna come over the mountain and, and kill you and your family scalp you you don't really we don't really think about that kind of stuff anymore it just makes it we're kind of spoiled not that it's a bad thing you know it's nice to be able to travel and do your business without having to worry about stuff like that but it was a different time back then you never knew you just never knew what day you know something like that would happen yeah so as you can see there are more modern graves here even way back up there where we started but down in here there are some revolutionary war markers down there but if you remember the moravians they um you know they're headstones laid flat on the ground. We visited several Moravian cemeteries in the past. Their headstones were always flat, kind of like uh, these right here, you can see. I'm not sure if these are originally flat. They're just laying down now, but yeah, the Moravian cemetery was here. Yeah, here you can see some more that are laying down flat in the Moravian style. So a lot of them, I mean, there's a whole lot more of them here, but they're just covered now. Who knows how many are here actually. Man, even if they are exposed, like that writing is yeah, terribly difficult. There are some I see a born in 1713 there. Yeah, here's a revolutionary war. This one looks like it's a newer one. George. George Corps, Revolutionary War veteran. There's a whole nother row of veterans up there. You can see like, all the tombstones are laying flat. Like I said, it looks like these have been cleaned up. I was here years ago. I was gonna film here, but I got kind of discouraged because you couldn't actually see the grave markers of the men that I was looking for. Oh, hey, there's a Zeller, David Zeller. Well, this is his wife, Elizabeth Fisher, wife of David Zeller. Okay. So, yes, yeah, somewhere in here, those men are buried. See some more. Yeah, even here, here's, a, here's one, here's one. You can see a little bit of writing on that one. Here's some more. So, there's a, there's a lot in here. They're just all covered up. You know, I feel like it would be advantageous to have these all cleaned off. Of course, the, the odd thing, though, is that uh, the ones that are underneath the grass and the ground are be actually being protected from being weathered even more. The ones that are exposed are getting you know, weathered a lot more, but it would be nice to be able to see the actual markers of the men who were massacred, have little, have little markers by their names. should note, too, that the... the History of the area says that there are two Indians buried here in this cemetery as well as part of the fighting for the French and Indian War. And once again, just scattered about, you can see the flat markers. A lot of them have nothing written on them anyway, or barely. So yeah. Some other markers down here. The newer one. Christian Shirk. Alright. Even back here, there's some just laying down. There's one back there. One here. Others oh, just kind of laying haphazardly about. Not sure if there's any up here. I see one lone one way over there. 
Yes, once again, down somewhere those men are buried. Kind of like to know where the church is or where the church was. It was up in here somewhere or back where some of these houses are located now. Yes, yeah, so the place is kept up nicely. It's all nice and mowed, not overgrown, but like I said, you can't, most of the tombstones are covered, the ones that are flat, you know, the Moravian style ones. Still think it would be cool to, I don't know if there are records anywhere that say, oh yes, there are, there are records on them. I just, I was just uh, <coughs> looking this morning. There, let me pick up my notebook. I was just, there is a record online of all the people that are buried here. So it'd be cool if they could uncover all those and find the massacre victims. Put like a plaque up for them. Because the sad thing is those men were in legit, like this was not considered Indian territory. There were settlers who were moving into Indian territory. These men were just out doing their business, plowing their fields and stuff, and you know, unfortunately became victims of the war. We'll say farewell to those four men and the Indians that were buried here too. You know, there's always two sides to the story. But I think that'll be it then for this video, folks. Just a quick, short little visit here. Like, there really isn't anything to see if you come here. You can't like see their actual graves, but they are buried here somewhere, and they died in this area. Not exactly sure where their individual farms were or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, they, they knew the dangers too, but you know, they also had, they had a farm to take care of. You know, being out and about like that during a time of war like that, when there were Indian raids coming over the mountains or through the mountains, you knew the danger, but you still had work to do. You know, you had a farm to take care of, a family to feed. That's the way it was. Like I said, we're kind of spoiled today. All right, folks, but I think that'll be it for this one. As always, thanks for coming along, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one, wherever that may be.